Now that we have all the game components in Battlegrounds, let's lay everything out so that a game can be started. We'll switch over to the PDF and we see that there's a section on how to set up the game. And below that there's a chart, a diagram showing you where everything goes. So we'll follow that. Um, let's start with the location card, which goes on the right hand side. And then we can see that above it is the power deck. So we put the power deck just above the location deck. And below that is the gold indicator and the day indicator. So we drag this down here. We have the day indicator beside it. Okay, actually these need to move over a little bit because the ending card goes above the day indicator and we need to have room for that. Like so. And what else? The item cards and special item cards also go here. Now the ending card probably won't need it until last obviously so we'll put that at the bottom of the deck by pressing a hotkey. Discards go there. Wandering monsters and the cards that we play go there. So we need some space below to lay out the cards during the game. Now we need to find a particular location card because we always start in the village. There's the village of Dawn. Let's pull that out of the deck. Put the location deck back in its place. So we'll put the village card over here. And you see how the token is underneath the card? We want to change the stacking order of things. In this case I'm doing it with a menu item, but you can also do it with a hotkey. So that's it for setting up with this diagram. Now let's see, we need to shuffle the location cards. So I select the deck. And again, I'm doing it with a menu command, but you can do it with a hotkey. to step to shuffle the power cards, select the deck, all right, we won't actually deal any cards until a game is started, so we, we can skip that step. All right, now I want to make sure there's enough room for the cards that are going to be in our hand which go in the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to lay out some cards to use as a placeholder just to see how much space they take up. Uh, that's too close to the edge. That is good. I'm going to lay out eight cards because we can have up to eight hit points. So there they are. That works pretty well. And if you flip them over, they're almost touching, so that's a perfect size. Good. Oh, wait. Actually, there is a problem here. The uh, magnified view of the cards is so big that it blocks out some of the decks. Now, these two are okay, but yeah, I'm going to have to make everything smaller. So let's select all these and resize them. Well, we were at 35%, so we'll drop to 25%. And we'll 
we'll do the other side as well, of course. So this will allow me to make the play area smaller to fit on the left side of the screen so that the magnified cards that show up on the right side of the screen don't block it. So I'll just rearrange the hand cards to see how much space we need for our playing area. And now let's select all the other cards and resize them as well. So that they're all the same size and flip them over and do resize the other side. Now I need to move everything to the right. Well, got to select the whole deck. Actually, let's do all of them at once. I'm just making sure that everything can be flipped without obscuring anything else or overlapping. Okay, so now the magnified view doesn't cover anything up. Even if we were to zoom in more, we should be okay. So let's select all of the game components and move them up as much as we dare. We want to have enough room on the top for uh, the game map to form out of location cards. And now we can shrink the table down so that it is just slightly larger than the playing area that we need. We set the height. That's good. And we can even set the, uh, instil instead of doing it one grid square at a time, we can do fractions of a grid square. So there I've just made it both sides even. Now for grid, we want this to be played without a grid. We're only using the grid right now for alignment purposes, but we're done with that. And the snap to grid, we'll leave that up to each player so they can toggle it on or off as needed. So there's our table, our whole playing area. We can zoom in a bit. We want to fill up as much of the screen as possible. I'm going to even go a little bit bigger maybe. And now the magnified views don't cover up the game cards. Now the, the gold and day indicators are a bit large now compared to the playing cards. So I'm going to shrink those down a bit to 40%. And make sure that they snap to the center of their grid. And now that this is the starting area, we should put it roughly the center of the map area. And that looks pretty good. 
I will select all these cards that I was using as a placeholder. Let's see, this would be the discard pile. We'll put these away and flip it over. We're going to merge this with the rest of the power deck. and shuffle everything together. We'll go ahead and save our progress. Now, here's a new command that's pretty handy. I need to rename all of these cards. So I type rename equals item card and all of those item cards have just been renamed. We'll do the same with the special item cards. And I've already named the ending card. Restack all of these and put them back in its place. Switch to our overview. And you can see in the unit manager that the cards all have the names they need to have. Now when I put together this power deck, I used uh, one of each card However, when you when you print this game out in the print and play version, you're supposed to print out certain pages twice so that you have two of each power card. So here we've got 16 cards. So I stack the deck and with it still selected, I duplicate it. So now we're going to have a total of 32 power cards. And here I've fanned out the 32 cards so that you can visually confirm that they're there. Let's put those back into place and shuffle it. We're now done laying this out, so let's export the media assets used in this game conversion so that it can be easily distributed to others. Here I could choose to use a password, I won't in this case. Just click on export and in a little while it's going to create one external file containing all the media assets used in this game. It's located in the media asset bundles folder so let's switch to the finder. Find that folder there and there it is the island of D2 42.8 megabytes. I'm going to copy that file and switch over to a distribution folder that I've been preparing and paste the file in here, the Media Asset Bundles folder, so that people will know where to put the file. Let's switch back and let's copy our saved game and counter file. We'll put it in here. Get rid of this placeholder I had before. And in here I placed the rule book for the game. And here is a readme that I prepared. It talks about how to install, uninstall, and generally how to use this digital conversion. Now we can just make a zip file of all this. and that zip file can be posted to a server or emailed to friends. So it was 43 megabytes, now it's been shrunken down to 35.7 megabytes. And that's all there is to it. The game conversion is now complete. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and I hope it encourages some of you to make your own digital game conversions. Thanks for watching.